So getting to this Arkansas team against Texas A&M, uh, a 21 to 17 loss, a four point loss mm -hmm. uh, for the Hogs in this game. All right. They score first. I saw that play, but I got to say, I, I usually make time for this game, but I did not see much of anything. I saw again, the Isaac Tesla uh, big touchdown to get uh, Arkansas going. So how would you size this one up? Man, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've been listening to a little bit of the talk radio today. Uh, down here we have uh, Chuck and Bo show, which is which is brand new. Of course, Chuck Baird is the voice of the Razorbacks, and he's been with uh, he's been with uh, uh, Morning Rush with those guys, and now him and Bo Mattingly have their own show. And I was listening to the callers, and it's it's kind of a mixed bag. People saying we need to be patient, Razorback fans should be patient, and then other callers going, "This is year five. I mean, what what the hell is going on? Like, why why are we still not winning these close games?" Uh, this one was, a, uh, I mean, yeah, you come out and you, you, what a gorgeous throw by green to Tesla. What a throw. And then, you know, they get off to this pretty quick start and you're thinking, okay, in, in the back of my mind, I'm saying, please don't be Oklahoma state 2.0 where you just get off to this great start. You rack up a bunch of yards, you outgain them. Um, you maybe make a mistake or two, but you overcome them. And then what happens? They let kind of A&M get back in the game their their a and pass rush which is really good by the way I, I don't know that arkansas fans are putting enough respect on uh on a and pass rush it's really good i thought their run defense i, th I don't know where they're ranked I, I wasn't super impressed with their run defense going back the couple times i was able to watch them and yet they clamped down arkansas pretty good to be fair jaquin and jackson was dealing with an injury or something was going on his carries were limited uh, he only had 10 carries for 37 yards, so something's going on there. And and they did. They they moved away from the run game, which is the exact opposite of what Arkansas should be doing. Um, it was. Uh, it's just Mark. It's more the same. And it, it's strange to me. To you know, we're talking about year five, and I'm hearing people saying you need to have patience. I mean, Mark, you know as well as I do. Five years in today's college football is, is is quite a long time. And to see the exact same thing play out over and over and over again, you're going to call fans delusional for at least wanting a better a better offensive line, you know, especially because your head coach did that for 30 years. He was an offensive line coach, and he was known as a guru, and he, he, he coached some big schools, including Georgia. And, and yet year five, you're having these same problems you had a year ago where the quarterback is running for his life. And by the way, even when Green had a clean pocket, wasn't super sharp. Uh, but it's hard to lay the blame at the feet of Green. It's like D all of the above, man. It's, it's the same thing. Uh, by the way, Arkansas is 6-16 six and 16 in one-score games under Pittman. 0-2 this year, 2024. So, I mean, it's mm. it's just more of the same. It's it's this is why fans are run. They're out of patience. They're, they're done for the people who wanted him gone last year. You know, they're, they're kind of sitting on a pedestal right now, right? They're going, see, we told you this is what you're in for. And then you've got the other side going, well, hold on. We're three and two. We got a winning record. Let's just slow down. And, uh, I, I don't know, Mark, it's, it's, it's difficult to wake up on a, on a Monday morning for hog fans and go to work and, have this one a, another close game linger on their minds yeah because once you go to the one score stat it's my thought that when that collection is three or four games anything could be the the root of the issue the the mm -hmm. team could actually be playing over its head and staying within one score of teams that they shouldn't be but once you get to 22 games over the course of four and a half seasons then we're looking at usually that starts to creep into, okay, there's a something going wrong here. This is a trend, and that usually points to game management, preparation, adjustments in game if you're constantly losing one-score games. Yeah. Yeah, it's – it's like I said, it's it's more of the same. And, and Hog fans are – Mark, I mean, they're just over it. And what's weird – now, this morning, the phone calls might – they're not the exception. I'm sure a lot of people want to call in and rage and, and all that, but uh, there seems to be, you know, I interact with a lot of hog fans, whether 
through friends, family, fans, people who watch the show. I get DMs. I'm sure you know that feeling all too well. It's weird that I'm getting the sense of just apathy has set in. It's almost like, yeah, we're upset, but yeah, it's just we expect this. I, that's that's crazy. If I'm Hunter Yurichek, this is a this is a huge problem because you do have Tennessee coming into town. I'm sure mm. fans will show up for that. But Mark, eventually people are going to stop showing up. I mean, they kind of already have. I mean, last year we saw a little bit of that. We saw that earlier in the year. This season, uh, they're kind of checking out, and it's like there's no excitement around the football program. And I said last year, if you keep Sam. And, and you don't get a gigantic turnaround, you don't kill it in the portal, which I think they did okay, and, and you don't create that off-season buzz, and then you get off to a slow start, this is going to get ugly quick. And guess what? You got Tennessee coming to town, who I think right now is like a 13 or so point favorite. You know, if you get land blasted in that one, you got to turn around and play LSU. Of course, you got a bye week, but um, this could get really ugly. And the pressure is going to be on. If it's not already on, it's it's about to turn up. It's about to turn up to 10. It's, it's going to get loud for, for Hunter Juracek. His inbox is going to be wild. <laughs> so do you think they need to hit a win total to keep all that from happening? Well, it's got to be six, but I, I, Mark, I don't see it. I, I really, I don't know where it's at. And this has been, this has been an ongoing argument in my discord and my live chats. What's the magic number? I've got someone in my Discord, one of my mods, saying, oh, well, people can't see the force for the trees. You know, you have to keep Sam even if he only wins five. And I, I'm telling you that, I, I, first off, I think that's – you're settling. Um, you really could be risking more of the same if you keep Sam. However, he's also not wrong. You could make a hire who's even worse and sets you back. I think some of that's that Chad Morris effect, right, where you went from Brett Bielema – for five years where you kind of reached the level of mediocrity and then you hired Chad Morris and you saw what happened. I think that's some of what's going on in hog fans minds. The people who don't want Sam fired, no matter what. Um, I, yeah, I think the win total might be six. I think I feel like it should be seven, but it's, it's going to be six. And again, I don't know where they come from. I, I really don't. I mean, unless you can, get an upset over LSU. I don't, I don't see Tennessee. I'm sorry. They're just, man, they're fired on all cylinders. Yeah. Maybe Mississippi state, Louisiana, they better Tech. Beat Mississippi state. If they lose to Mississippi state, he's gone. I, I think that's it. I think, I think the Mississippi state game, especially if you lose to LSU in Tennessee and you're riding that losing streak into Mississippi state and you lose that game. I, I think he's probably fired. And yeah, you still would have, what four games left? I think one, two, three, four games. Um, but I, I think he'd be gone. I do. If if he lost to Mississippi State and you're riding a losing streak going into that game, yeah, I maybe I'm wrong, but I think he'd be let go. Got Ty Hudson here. Tusk talk with Ty. It's only a click away right here on YouTube. So get on over there, check out what uh, Ty has available, and of course uh, the basketball season. That's going to be the saving grace, I guess, out of all this to a certain extent, but we're not going to talk hoops, but uh, just letting you know that Ty covers all things Arkansas athletics. So do you think this is a matter of this is the team we have, the coaching staff is doing a, I don't want to say an outstanding job, but a passable job. They're doing uh, a B level work. And this is just the most that they can get out of these guys, or there are serious gaffes and underachievements scattered across both sides of the football will include special teams. And therefore this team could play better and the results could be better, or this is what this football team is. And therefore it's a talent acquisition issue. Is D all the above <laughs> an option? Like I, yeah, yeah. I think it it's, I think it's a little bit of all of that. Like I, A and M has more talent, right? But so did Auburn, and Arkansas played really yeah. bad against Auburn and still beat them by ten points. And you feel like maybe they left some points on the field. Auburn, to be fair, left points on the field. They had that long run that was uh, ended up being a fumble that Arkansas recovered. But um, you know things have have not really gone Arkansas's way. They, you know, they're penalized 
and I, I haven't blamed officiating at all this year because I, I really think it's just an Arkansas problem. However, I did think there was quite a bit of holding on AM that was not called, and Arkansas got away with a pretty big PI in the third quarter. I think it was uh, I think it was 15. A couple of times I saw him grab in Jersey, which is, you know, by the way, something I saw him do quite a bit in spring and fall camp, but it's showing up in games. He was lucky to not get called for PIs, but uh, they kind of let them play until they didn't, and then Arkansas just got hit left and right with penalties. But I think it's D all the above. I mean, they're, nobody they have coming up, right? Okay, Auburn had more talent than Arkansas. A&M has more talent than Arkansas. Tennessee has more talent than Arkansas. LSU has more talent than Arkansas. Then you get to Mississippi State where – Arkansas's got the edge. Ole Miss, Ole Miss clearly has the edge because what they did in the portal. Uh, and then Texas, obviously, right, has more talent. And then Louisiana Tech, you better have more talent then. And then Missouri, you know, I don't really know talent-wise, if you're just talking stars where Mizzou racks up, I think they are behind Arkansas. But, like, they're – despite kind of a weird start for them, their offense looks a little not so great, yeah. they're still going to get the edge. It's just a, I, I, it's just a reflection of the head coach. If you want my opinion, I mean, where you're at right now, your offensive line, and this was this was brought up Saturday. You know, where are the answers on the offensive line? Can they? Is is there someone else they can go to? And the answer is, I'm pretty sure this is what you get. It's what you get. This was the talent issue or the depth issue I've been talking about since spring and fall camp, Mark. I've been saying this. They've got what they've got. There's not, I don't know if there's any help on the way. And they've got Patrick Kudas, who's been hurt, uh, who would be a very good asset on that offensive line. When he wasn't practicing, when we weren't hearing about him and and we weren't seeing him, and then they cut off the media, they don't allow us back at practice. He's being asked, Pittman's being asked, where's Kudas? What's going on with Kudas? And it's, you know, so we don't know. And it sounds like he might get a red shirt. That was a problem. That that was I wasn't going to say red flag, but this is an issue. They don't have the depth there. I don't think they have the depth in the interior defensive line. Although run defense has actually been pretty good until the A and M game. Um, it's just it's all over the place. I, I don't. I wish I had a more clear answer, but I. It, it's it's kind of like I said, maybe a little bit of D all the above. It's it's this might just be as good as you get. Uh, I know in the secondary, they are missing guys like Hudson Clark and Braxton. Those are two huge pieces. When you talk about Braxton from a talent level standpoint, I think he's a future probably third, maybe second, third round draft pick. I think he's that good. And then Hudson Clark, who's the communicator on the back end of that defense. He's the communicator. You may not like his play the last couple of years, and I would agree, but he is the, the key communicator in the back end of that defense. Uh, and he's not been available. And so it's it, there's just so many things going on here, a lot of moving parts. I don't think help is on the way until they can get fully healthy, it, especially in the secondary. There's just so many questions. And again, I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but it, it just kind of is what it is. They, um, I don't know where the answers are. Uh, you feel like if something were to happen to Armstrong, who's – Got some durability issues. I love Armstrong. I think he's he's just such a fantastic. He's a warrior, man. I mean, he wants he wants yards after catch. He wants to make the big plays. He's got great hands. He's got he's got he can make the physical catches with coverage right on top of him. But he's a you know, like he's he's had issues every week with some kind of you know either stinger cramping, just kind of the minor stuff. He seems a little injury prone. They're minor injuries that keep him off the field. And then the offense starts to struggle because they don't have another receiver. It was nice to see Tesla make that wonderful – what a throw again by Green and what a catch by him. And for him to get open like that, that was great to see. But then he kind of vanished. And Centennia, I think, kind of stepped up for him. But they, it doesn't seem like outside of Armstrong there's any real reliable number two. Maybe it's Centennia. But I, I don't know. There's Again, I could go on and on, but it, there's a lot of question marks with this team. And we're at the halfway point of the season, or we're coming up on it. Yeah, so three and two overall. Uh, again, the Oklahoma State game is uh, a game in which I saw start to finish. Outplayed Oklahoma State for three-plus quarters, let the game go, made mistakes, racked up a ridiculous amount of yardage and yardage advantage. Oklahoma State has proven not to be that good of a football team. But regardless, uh, they were an underdog, sizable dog, 10 points at Oklahoma State. 
the Auburn game. Had Auburn been playing better, they were supposed to be cow by two touchdowns. They would have been a more substantial favorite, but Arkansas was about a three-point dog at Auburn. So if you really look at where the team would have been projected by most people at this point, it would have been two and three and not three and two. Yeah. Or it would have been, let's see. Yeah. So they're three and two. I mean, the projection would be that they'd be zero and two in conference play for sure. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of that is, I mean, that's fair, you know, and I, and I do think Arkansas again, kind of gave that game away to A&M with three turnovers to none with the penalties, uh, they led most of the game. It didn't really seem like it was getting to a point where you felt like AM was for sure going to win until, you know, late in the fourth quarter um, or at least around the whatever, the 12. Well, I say late in the fourth quarter, actually fairly early in the in the fourth quarter. But still, like Arkansas was in there. Um, and Auburn is just not good. Auburn is just I, – I don't know what's going on with Hugh Freeze. I'm a little surprised at how – I don't know, how just not impressive they are this year and last year and – uh, but I think that is some of it, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. In fact, I think my original prediction that had them at six wins, I believe I had them at zero and two in conference play. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I had Arkansas beating A&M. So we're right where I guess I thought we would be, but I think it's the manner in which they're losing these games and just how, just how bad the pass protection is from the offensive line. I mean, it's, they're giving up far too many. You can just watch Taylor Green. He's running for his life. Um, he's making. He is holding on to the ball at times too long, but for the most part, he's running for his life. You know, there and, and it could be a pre-snap issue with him. He's not sliding protection correctly. He's not identifying the mic. He's not. He's he's not. He doesn't know what's happening pre-snap with with defenses. Maybe that's some of it. Maybe it's not all on the offensive line, but. Something's not clicking up there, and, and uh, I think that's that's the part that's still a little bit surprising. That's the reason why fans are so down. Is like, here we go again. The offensive line's bad, and the quarterback, you know, he's already not accurate. He's got issues with accuracy, and on top of that, he's he's um, he's got to run for his life just about every snap. Now, during the off season, or I should say, August camp, you're out there every day so once the season starts are you able to get out to practice no no they closed it off um yeah they gave us great access during spring um they go by periods so you get like period one through we got like periods one through gosh like seven and eight a couple of times in spring and then early on in fall camp they gave us quite a bit and then the closer they got to install week uh, in fact, the last week of spring camp or uh, fall camp, we they they you know said no more media. Um, so I don't know when and if we'll be back at all this year. Which I would like to see what they're doing in practice. But even when we were there, Mark, the most you could take away from practices were like fastball, um, which are like quick little scrimmage. You know, it's like three four plays and then that's it. Then the twos come onto the field. Then they get their three three or four plays. Uh, and then the threes come on, and then then they go into individual drills. Um, so you try to get what you can from fastball. And so that's kind of what we're missing and what we're not able to see. And uh, so that's why I think, too, there's an even bigger mystery as to what's going on, or, you know, because you don't have eyeballs there, that you have to listen to what the U of A is telling you or what Pittman's telling you. That's all you got. You don't have the media that's able to go, well, we saw this at practice, what's going on. You have none of that. But by the way, That's a lot of schools, apparently. I guess a lot of schools are doing that now. Well, rest assured, Ty, our buddy Vandy Dandy is picking a upset over Tennessee. We don't know Vandy Dandy's prediction record. That might be helpful. Tennessee is not a monolith. Interesting. Okay. I wouldn't be disappointed yet as an Arkansas fan. I don't know. Is is that what he's saying? Is is he just saying that – Maybe the worst is yet to come, or is he saying just hold on? Maybe you're going to get a win somewhere. I think they are, and this is what's crazy, Mark. At their best, when they play clean, mostly mistake-free football, I really think they can go toe-to-toe with with a lot of teams. Well, they do usually. 
And they have. Yeah, I mean, majority of the losses have been pretty close. Even with the debacle they had last year with the Enos. That's what's wild about this. But this year, you have this quarterback who up until this game was incredible on third down and long. It could be third and 15. It doesn't matter. The guys are going to convert. They were one of the top converting, third down converting offenses in college football for the first four weeks. It was because of Taylor Green. And yeah, Broad, uh, 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 Jaquin and Jackson, the running back as well. But Green was a big part of what was going on third down. And AM, you got to tip your cap to them. They had a fantastic game plan uh, to, to slow down and contain Green, and it worked. Um, and then it forced Green to become a passing quarterback, and you saw what happened. Like, he's not, that's not what he is. Um, this is our buddy George. That's the only reason I post that. That has nothing to do with Arkansas. Oh, okay. All right. George, uh, George, do not text and drive. So we appreciate you yeah. listening on your way to wherever. Absolutely. I do that too. I'll put on, I, I do that more with YouTube than I do radio. I don't listen to radio anymore. I'll put on YouTube if there's someone I like and I want to listen to. I'm just going to put them on them on Bluetooth and listen to that because it's less ads. My gosh, radio is <laughs> it's just all ads. I guess we're spoiled, but um yeah, I I um they're not wrong. You should 3 and 2 is not where a lot of people would have had Arkansas. They would have had Arkansas losing to Auburn. Again, I think that's looking back at it, I think they should have won that game. I, th- sure. I think they're better. They're a better yeah. team than Auburn. We'll see where that takes them. We'll see how far, how much better they are than than maybe the the back end of the SEC. Maybe they could sneak out of an upset somewhere. 